One of the major complaints aimed at Eric Ten Hag this season has been the lack of structure in the tactical formation. You genuinely could not name what our best midfield currently is, let alone our best 11. Eric Ten Hag has to establish a reliable spine throughout the centre of the team. At the start of the season, we identified the signing of Mount, Onana and Hoyland as potential final pieces, or at least gateway pieces, to really build on what the successes that we had last season and all of those players could potentially feature for at least five years. Now, we haven't had Mount. Hoyland's been adjusting and injured. And Onana's only finally just fully kicked into gear whilst being faced with like the most shots in Premier League. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't have a blueprint for a spine there, but it's a near certainty that Casemiro will be on his way out and that spot seems to be opening up for a long-term replacement. And now that all of these players are on their way back into the team, can we start to finally establish a spine in the Manchester United squad? To answer that, we have to first start with who constitutes the current spine. In pre-season, we picked out a few names for who those could be, and you're probably looking at a few of the same names, but the circumstances this season have undoubtedly altered who that's going to be. Now, Onana, first name on the team sheet, and the first name that comes up when you start thinking about the spine. And he's taken some stick this season. I think he was poor, I think is the only word I can think, in the Champions League, but I felt he was pretty good in the league. Um, so I was never really overly worried about Onana. I just didn't really like the stick he was getting. And he's also now prevented more goals um, than any other goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. He's faced more shots than virtually every other Premier, uh, keeper in the Premier League this season. I think we know what we're getting. What I want to see from him is him um, playing with the ball and impacting us in possession because that's what I haven't seen yet from Onana. Next up, it would be Martinez. And this has been a problem for us because we've been really unlucky not to have Lissandro Martinez for basically all of the season. He's been working his way back. Um, it could end up being a little bit too late uh, from the little Argentinian. But he is by far our best centre-half. And I think he's a, a force multiplier as well. I think he makes the players around him better. I think the character uh, and the ethos in which he plays is fantastic. And I think because of that, he improves everybody else. He raises everybody else's standards. And that's the sort of intangibles of a real leader. And that's what he brings. He's very good at his job and he looks impeccable doing it. Kobe Mainu. Now, comfortably the biggest breakout star in world football this season. Mainu is the definition of cool, calm and composed. Completely asserted himself as undroppable. I'm just going to say that line again because I think all of us will agree, but also it's absolutely wild. He has completely asserted himself as undroppable in a midfield where you've got Ericsson and Casemiro and Mount and Bruno. This kid has come in and within 15, 16 Premier League games has gone, that's my shirt. And everyone's gone, yeah, that's your shirt. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Cobby um, and a lot of Manchester United with him in it over the coming years. He's already displaying immense leadership qualities, and not to mention the incredible on-field displays. He is an established part of that spine, and whoever we sign should be thought of as how will they play with Maynou. Um, and it's insane that I'm saying this, but I don't think anyone disagrees, and I don't think I'm wrong in saying this as well. Uh, he has risen the tide of the players around him. Um, and he is a first-choice midfielder for Manchester United. Uh, next up would be Bruno. Um, he would and should be offended if he was not included in an integral piece of Manchester United's spine. And I know a lot of fans disagree with this, um, but he's the club captain. Uh, he is a born natural leader. Um, he can come across as incredibly petulant and... Um, agitated at times and I think that's just how he displays his desire to win um, physically they don't come more determined or resilient he is bulletproof and he gets the shit kicked out of him week in week out he is an elite chance creator and we need to get him back in form 
to be able to take the team to new heights. Um, you simply cannot exclude or forget Bruno Fernandes. I also would not want to see him sold either. Rasmus Hoyland. I think Hoyland's success this season um, warrant him some recognition as being consistent. He's registered seven goals and two assists in 21 Premier League games, and he scored five in six in the Champions League this season. He contributes to the way we play very effectively, and when he's not playing well, boy, do we stink the place out. Um, and when he's not scoring goals, he's still playing th others through, and he still makes shot-creating actions for others, and he will always press. And I would say at the moment, that's the people who complete the spine. Maybe Delo is a little bit on the periphery of that, although he doesn't technically play in the spine of the team. I think he's made himself um, quite an important first-choice player. But the rest of the spine is an incomplete puzzle piece. We require a Varane replacement. The Sandro Martinez's dance partner is going to be a very, very important signing. Um, with Varane expected to leave. Numerous reports are linking United with a new centre-half. Jean-Claire Todibo uh, does seem to be the name that is being touted around for Varane's spot, and he's said to be a born leader and an example for young defenders of the requirements of a quality centre-half in the modern game. He's excellent in possession and would only be rivaled by a centre-half partnership with Martinez. So... Um, he would be an excellent signing for us. Casemiro's replacement. Now, Casemiro's on the way out. And you could even make the case that Maynou is Casemiro's replacement because he is probably going to play as that kind of number eight. Um, realistically, we, we actually need probably a Michael Carrick replacement, if I'm being serious, right? Um, I, I think it could still be Maynou, but we do require some sort of a number six to slot in and be the legs and be the destroyer in that midfield. We said in pre-season, you know, the new number eight could be Mason Mount. Could you roll together a midfield three of Bruno, Mount and Casemiro? It would require Bruno being an actual number eight and playing a, you know, a symmetrical triangle rather than a two and a 10 or two sixes and a 10. Um, could we adapt and see Mount, Maynou and Bruno? Physically, it's a small midfield. Um, and I don't know if it's got the, the the raw physicality needed to be successful in the Premier League. You can point to some of Manchester City's midfields. Rodri's a, spe Rodri's a specimen. And also, they're going to have so much more of the ball than Manchester United are, at least for the time being. I think you've got to go with maybe a, something a bit more physical, for now at least. You know, we've done a ton of different videos on number six options. At this point, it could be anyone. It just needs to be someone who's a bit of a leader and it is good to go from the get-go because that spine has to be formed. And one of the number one issues with Manchester United at the moment is how open we are through midfield. We have to form the spine. The players in the wide areas are very important and they can provide the finishing touches. And like I said, I think Delo's probably part of the spine. But I think those key players down the middle are the ones that win you titles and bring you success. You can't change those too much. So you've got to get reliable players that you know are going to play week in, week out. You know, it's not always how you're going to win a game, but how you start to stop losing the games. Because right now, United are losing far too many of those games. There's a lot to do for United in the summer. But I think establishing a reliable spine of the team will be very, very important and a big step towards doing the right things as we go forward. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.